you wanted another review. It's another review uh, for John Wick Chapter 2. Um, man, that was a good time. Especially after seeing Rings last week, I needed a good movie. Um, and I actually hurt my hand. I'm not doing that. Uh, John Wick Chapter 2 takes place literally like... Um... I don't know, a couple days after the first one? Maybe even a couple hours? It, the movie opens up with John getting his car back, which is hilarious because the damn thing gets pretty much totaled, just gets smashed in by other cars, and then John Lee was on, which just comes in for a season. What the hell did you do to it? It's like, you know, the chassis, man, it's just about to fall out, all that. It's like, can you fix it? I can fix it. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I crack your windshield, too. It gets it back from Paul Sorvini, who's the brother of the um, Russian, uh, Russian mobster in the first one. By the way, if you hear some background noise, um, it's because I got the heat on because it is snowing at the moment. Uh, it was not snowing when I got in the theater at 1025, surprisingly. Uh, I get out around 1230 something and yeah, it's snowing pretty good again, but I was going to be damned if I wasn't going to see at least one movie this weekend. I'll probably be able to manage two. I do want to get all three, even though I don't want it's because I have to review stuff on this channel that I'm going to see Fifty Shades Darker. But, um, worst case scenario, I'll actually, because I got Monday and Tuesday off, I'll just bump my, uh, my schedule to Monday and Tuesday, see movies then. Uh, but no, I mean, yeah, John Wick Chapter 2 takes place immediately after that. Basically, John has to go back into the game because he owes what is known as a marker to, uh, to a Italian mobster. Um, basically, marker is you put your blood on this symbol they, you ask for help, but at any point in any time, they come back and give you this marker, you are honor bound to acquiesce to their request. So, basically, and he comes, John refuses uh, because he's out, and then he blows up his house, like you see in the trailer, he's like, all right, I'll do it. And then he gets double crossed by them, kind of, sort of. Um, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, he got double crossed by them. Um, so, and you know, that's, that's the movie. And I will definitely say, I think I like the first John Wick better, but that, that is no slight on this movie whatsoever. This movie is pretty much what you expect out of a movie based off John Wick, a sequel based off John Wick, John Wick 2 is exactly what you expect. The action is just as good as the first one, if not even better. The amount, the choreography, the gun kata, if you will, the different assassins we see trying to take John on, him, his fighting style, he, he, we literally see him kill people with a fucking pencil. <laughs> it's just, I want some kill three men with a pencil. A fucking pencil. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean, it's, it is what you, I mean, there's, I can't go into too much, not because I don't want to get into spoilers, just, it's just a damn good movie, I don't have a lot of negative time, I can just gush about it the entire time, we learn actually a lot more about the world in John Wick, that there, first off, Ian McShane is actually the manager of that particular continental, um, Common, Common was, uh, is a bodyguard, uh, to the sister of the guy who hired John Wick, because that guy hired Wick to kill his sister, because she apparently has a seat of, of, at the High Council or something like that. Um, which is essentially, I'm guessing, it's a seat at a table of 12, as they put 12 seats. And what I'm guessing it is, it's the overall heads of the entire criminal world. That's, that's the best I could have They don't truly explain it. But that's the basic gist you can get from it. Um... I mean, what what can I really say about that? I I, I mean, we, we get a really and ugh, damn, the, the one thing that will make me cringe in any movie is seeing someone slit their wrist. Not even doing that. No, doing it the way where you kill yourself, kind of slit your wrist. And she basically, because her and John apparently have a history and they're friends. Um, you'll forget, have to forget the the, uh, the uh, heat going on or the wipers going back and forth just to keep the snow off them. <laughs> um, she basically says, you know what, I, I went and came in, or something about my own terms, I'm going out on my own terms. So she slits her wrists into her tub and, you know, bleeds out, more or less. And then he just puts a shot in her head to signify he did that. And the comment of him passes, he's like, John, Cassius, you working? Uh-huh. Good night? Afraid so. And then, 
boom. It's all right, let's go out. And then he skits. Then we, I love the John basically that you see that scene in the trailer or, or TV spot where he goes to the continental Rome. It's like I like a tasting. He gets all these weapons, and in the tunnel he strategically placed the weapon. So when he's run out of bolts for one weapon, he'll ditch the weapon and then just take the weapon where he had it originally and just start going to town again. And then he gets out of there. And Commons Bell's like, not a good night for you, John. They just have this fight until they basically break through a window. It's like, gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> Me I remind you there's no business done on the continental grounds. Now go to the bar and calm down. It's like, uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Gin? Just still drinking gin? Yeah. Bourbon? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ruby Rose is the bodyguard, too. I don't know the actor's name. I didn't stay for the credits, but... Um, is the bodyguard to the guy who who had the uh, marker on Wick, um, and I can't say I'm huge on Ruby Rose as an actress. I've never watched Orange Is the New Black. I don't know. I mean, I hear she's a very popular actress slash model because she's she's androgynous, attractive, and she's she kind of, she's kind of like non-binary. And that's like one of her, not claims to fame, but one of the things she's known for is she doesn't kind of, she kind of just defies gender roles or gender norms, I should say. Um, and I'm just going to have that on in the background a little bit. Sorry if you hear the scraping a little bit. Just, I'm going to have to clean my car off before I leave because it's still in peace at the moment. Um, so, and she's a, she's a mute, which I don't know the actual biology of what it means to be mute. I know you can't talk. Uh, hence, she's doing sign language, and John actually understands sign language and does sign language back. Um, B, it's like, be seeing, seeing you, John Wick, or I, I don't, I couldn't follow. It's like, and then he just goes, not if I see you first. <laughs> and you just see a look of her. Like, oh, God. And I, I had to laugh at the, the fight at the end, the fight finale where they're fighting in that room of mirrors you see in the trailer. That was a pretty fun fight because it's so weird and wacky. It's kind of like Enter the Dragon times 10. But and when she's trying to take him down, she's got a knife and, you know, she's, uh, you know, swiping. And she's punching him. And you can clearly see it's not doing anything. I mean, maybe he can feel it, but, you know, we see throughout the movie, he's just bruised and battered and beaten. At one point, he's fighting you know, normally with a gut shot for half the, for the remaining third of the movie until he gets, like, medical treatment by Lawrence Fishburne. Um, his guys. And, but I'm just watching your punch, and he's like, do, do, do. I'm like, look, you got a blade, you're agile, I'm sure you're nimble, and maybe you got some strength. But you, you clearly can't don't match this guy physically at all. He's just bouncing off him. And then he just, you know, sticks the knife in her. And she, you know, I was like, be seeing you. And he just, sure. Because <laughs> that's the same thing. Except with Colin, it's like, I don't know. It's, it's in your aorta. You pull that knife out, you're going to bleed out and die. Yeah, you can call it professional courtesy. <laughs> uh, Lawrence, it's great to see Lawrence Fishburne and Keanu Reeves back in something that I like. Um, I don't like them. I'm one of the people who stands around saying I don't like the Matrix movies that much. I own the first one because we ended up getting it from a friend who passed away. Um, but yeah, I, I just never been a fan. Watching these guys interact in this, nah, this is awesome. <laughs> you just see Lord Spitzer and say, I now I see all. I am all knowing. <laughs> so you see, you get that last like, ha ha ha. Uh, it's like no, let me get let, a lot of blood. She's like seven million is a lot of money, John. A lot of money. Seven million. What's, what's, the, what's the price up on his head? Seven million. Seven million? Woo! We go to Applebee's after this. <laughs> and of course, and then of course, in, that, in the movie, trailer, he says, like, someone please get this man again. He says it exactly like that, with no preemptiveness at all. Just, with someone please get this man a gun. <laughs> I love you, Lawrence Fishburne. You are a national treasure. Among with John Goodman and Robert Downey Jr. and a couple other people I can think of. You're all national treasures to me. Um, and a couple things that, though, did stand out. Uh, there was, I wouldn't say they're shaking it, but there's times where I had to adjust myself to what I was looking at. I wasn't certain what I was looking at. Um, making sure my, uh, <laughs> it went back windows defrosting. I'm like, I, I couldn't be certain what I was, and then I could see it and everything like that. But there's a couple scenes. Like, in one scene, I see him, and it's one of his standard moves where he, like, flips a guy over. And there's a lot of repetitive choreography in a good way. Like, this scene more human, like, like a repertoire set of uh, moves that this guy does. 
Uh, but it, where he gets a guy, he, he's got him almost like um, I don't know what the term is, but he, more or less he's got he's on the ground. He's got a gun. He's got the guy's head between his knees, ankle somewhere around there, and he shoots him. And then he shoots the guy in the head. But from the angle in the movie, it almost looks like he shoots the guy in the head and then shoots himself through the foot almost. I that that was that was odd. It was an odd angle, but it like happens in an instant. So I'm like, eh, whatever. Um, I'm watching like the different assassins just try to kill John for the seven million. Uh, that was hilarious because you got one assassin who keeps a violin and a gun, and he just breaks her neck. You get the fat sumo assassin, which is hilarious, who can take a lot of bullets. He even took a bullet to the back of the head, was about to get up, and then John shoots him in the head again. And he dies. Uh, the two um, Asian guys who try to take him on. And like uh, at the uh, subway bar, but I don't know. Um, you know they, that was a fun fight because he he kind of tries to shoot them, but he ends up having to use the pencil. Stabs one guy. He ends up the last guy. He like just skewers on the pencil. First guy though, and this is another one that made me go ooh, was just stabs him right in the end. Just goes. I'm like, oh damn. Uh, the other guy, the guy like three seats over me was having the same reaction. Because he was having it about every five minutes. Like, ooh, 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 ooh. Like, okay, dude, I get it. I mean, no game wrong. I'm having a blast with this, but, you know, it's, well, whatever. It's, it's fine to have those reactions. I mean, well, I'm not judging you. Um, I, I can't think of any real negatives. I mean... It's interesting to know how this movie ends. The movie basically ends with John killing the guy on the continental grounds. So he's now excommunicado, excommunicated from the continental. He can't go there for assistance or help anymore. Um, and since he killed a member of the 12 table, the 12 chairs of the high council, or whatever, of Pitman Mafia, whatever, now everyone's coming after him. And he has no backup now. But... I have to ask a question. You ever feel like the world is against you? Because if the amount of assassins in this world were the amount of assassins in the actual real world, I would believe the actual world is out against you because it seems like everybody in New York City alone is an assassin. <laughs> like, they all just look at Joe's like, yep, we know you're an assassin. Yep, you're mine. You're, our, you're my mine. That money's mine. It's like, yeah, and that's how the movie ends, him running with the dog. The dog did not die. I was very happy about that. Uh, and it's just it's just a fun octane ride. If you enjoyed the first John Wick, you'll definitely enjoy the second John Wick. If you didn't, well then pass. Don't bother with it. Um, uh, let's see your trailers. You know, I was told the Logan trailers. I mean, I've already watched the Logan trailers all of them, but I, I love seeing them on the big screen because I can't wait to see that movie. But I didn't get that attached. To this. What I did get was All Eyes on Me, uh, the a biopic of Tupac Shakur. Uh, I have nothing against Tupac Shakur. In fact, he's one of the few rappers I really do like, kind of like. I don't like rap music that much, but, you know, yeah, I can I can admit when I like something uh, of a genre that's not my taste. Um, that being said, I didn't see Straight Outta Compton. I don't, I doubt I'm going to see All Eyes on Me. Nothing against either of those movies, just I got have many other things I got to do in the week and many other movies that come out. So, if I can, I'll get to it, but it's not going to be on my high priority list. Uh, Free Fire again. I can't wait for that movie. This just looks stupid fun. Um, Fast 8 got that trailer. I like the Fast movies for the... I, I like the, the first one's basically Point Break, but it's alright for what it is. Second two, two, second and third one, don't care about those at all. Fourth one's alright. Fifth one's pretty fun. Sixth one's pretty awesome. Seventh one kicked ass. And now uh, they gotta bring a, bring a submarine into the picture. Why not? Um, Ghost in the Shell. Yeah, looks alright. Pirates of the Caribbean, I mean, I'm, I'll be there. I, I don't care about the whitewashing issue. Pirates of the Caribbean 5, got the super old trailer. I can't, I'm I'm kind of on board for that. I actually did a comparison today on Box Office of Mojo. Bob, 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 Box Office of Mojo. Box Office Mojo. Of which franchise is more profitable? Or uh, the Fra Transformers or the Pirates of the Caribbean? I think only by like a couple million, believe it or not, worldwide without adjustments. It's Pirates of the Caribbean that's the slightly more profitable uh, franchise between the two. Because uh, when you think about it, they're both franchises now going on their fifth installment, both coming out this year, uh, that start off with a good movie and then just kind of escalated down with you know, what I would agree is the fourth movie being better than the other two in the middle. Um, 
I don't. I mean, if you were to ask me which one I like better, I like the Pirates of the Caribbean movies better. I just do. They got they got more entertaining characters. You just have a better sense of fun to them. Whereas the Transformer movies, they, uh, they need a different director. I don't like Michael Bay as a director for the Transformers anymore. So, and they don't. They always come off more grim and despairing than you know fun. Um, so, you know, that. And then the last one I got was Phoenix, which apparently is an alien abduction found footage movie. Uh, okay. It's not the first one. It's not the first of it's kind of not going to be the last. It is what it is. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's my thoughts on John Wick Chapter 2. It's a, it's a shorter review. If I had Mark here, I'm sure we would have more fun talking. We... We'll probably see it, me and him together. He wants to see the Lego movie, too, and Batman, and I want to see that, too. So, assuming I can get out of my house tomorrow, uh, it's either going to be Lego Batman or John Wick Chapter 2. If I cannot get out of my house tomorrow, um, one of those will probably be either Sunday or the latest Monday and Tuesday. I'm willing to make an exception on my, you know, time sensitivity rules to an extent, two degrees. I just prefer to do it, like, the nights they come out, just because time sensitivity for reviews and all that stuff. You know, you reviewers know what I'm talking about, right? Eh? Eh? I don't know. <laughs> For any reviewer who actually does watch my stuff, thank you. Um, but yeah, after that, though, uh, next week... You know, we'll deal with next week when next week comes. Anyway, besides that, I got Box Office on Sunday, and I got um, Dragon Ball Super tomorrow. Uh, uh, review. Episode review. 79, where we're getting to the Universal Tournament. Um... I, part of me wants to do videos about the actual news for the arc. Like, we got news on the new gods, some of the new gods. We got episodes, like, we know, like, who the op opponents in the nine, uh, Universe Nine versus Goku, Boo, and Gohan, uh, preliminary match is gonna be. Um, we know an episode's gonna be, the first round's gonna be Majin Boo's fighting, and apparently it's gonna be, I can't wait to see Boo fight again. Boo, this is gonna be fun. Um, but, yeah, I, I think I'm gonna stick with just the reviews for the cha uh, the episodes for right now. I've got enough stuff on the channel to do while, before adding other stuff, but I don't know. Maybe at some point. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you folks next time. Have a good night, and if you're in the New England area dealing with snow, drive safe, be warm, and God bless. Good night, everyone.